Saturday, February 29th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the last week of February 2020 is a historic week for the markets. Vicious collapse in the stock market. I'm going to talk about why I think it's been so abrupt and almost like a precipice, really, if you look at the chart. Uh, I have an idea. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, gold uh, and the gold mining uh, stocks. Uh, I'm going to compare the stock market uh, to what happened in 1929. Um, I'm going to talk about as well the fundamentals going forward for the precious metals. Uh, why I think they're even better. I'm going to look at the bond market as well. That is uh, also uh, making uh, historic moves. The 10-year yield moved to a record low of 1.12% this week. So before I start, I'd like to thank all the supporters of the channel. We're getting a lot more views. Uh, we're getting uh, new subscribers as well uh, every day. It's picked up again. I'd like to thank all of those who support the channel through PayPal, through Patreon, through the Maneco 64 Teespring store, and through other means. So let's quickly go through the scorecard in terms of uh, performance for the stock markets. Uh, for the week, the Dow dropped uh, over 12%, S&P 11.5%, NASDAQ 10.5%, and it was the same thing in Europe, roughly uh, 11 to 12 percent drop, as you can see there from from the uh, investing.com uh, page. Year to date, the Dow is down almost 11 percent. S&P down eight and a half. Nasdaq four and a half. So now uh, let's look at some comparisons, uh, because one of the reasons uh, I think personally this uh, drop has been so precipitous in the stock market in the US and other places in Europe and in Asia as well. Yes, we had the trigger uh, from what's happening in China, but um, we've been talking for over a year how the stock market just keeps going up, how the central bankers have been able to keep extending the recovery uh, or expansion that we've had since the crisis of 08 that bottomed in 09. So one of the reasons I think the uh, drop this week, this past week, has been so precipitous is that they've extended for so long, they've kept it going for so long, uh, almost like uh, trying to stop a river from going through, like putting a dam up and that dam being just enough to keep the river from going through, but then eventually it just bursts. And, and I think that's what we're, we're having. They kept uh, this unnatural recovery going and going through a lot of debt, through a lot of monetary policy, through a lot of fiscal policy, and eventually it just bursts. And that's why I think it's so, it's been so, uh, devastating uh, so we've got here 1929 versus 2020 comparison the top chart is 1929 so I did a few calculations and uh, from the top on September 3rd 1929 the Dow reached 386.1 to the low on November 13th 1929 uh, that was 50 business days so yeah, the stock market crash from top to bottom. And this bottom is actually not the final bottom. The bottom was later on, I think in 1932. But this initial move took 50 business days, corrected by 49.4%. You can see there it rebounded afterwards towards that uh, good old 38.2 uh, retracement Fibonacci, just a little higher, uh, the stock market. So the chart below, of course, is today, uh, the Dow. It reached the top on February 12th, just above 29,500. So it's been about 14 business days until yesterday. And we dropped uh, at one point uh, yesterday, it was down as much as 16%. Uh, 
So we dropped 16% in 14 business days, uh, while in 1929, we saw a drop of 49% over 50 business days. Am I saying we're gonna see a drop of 49%? Uh, who knows, but I'm trying to compare uh, how quickly uh, the stock market is dropping right now. Uh, from the top in 1929, you see that uh, it, it didn't drop anywhere as quickly as it's dropping today. Um, and uh, will this year's top be the all-time top for a long time, like 1929? That's still to be seen. We still need to see how central bankers are going to react. Uh, there's a lot of speculation now that uh, the Fed's going to start cutting rates. Their next meeting, of course, is March 19th to the 20th. They might do something uh, beforehand. Jay Powell yesterday said that uh, they're still watching things, that the economy is still sound, <laughs> uh, that growth is still uh, good, uh, and they need more time to see how the crisis uh, from China that's spreading is going to impact the economy. Um, so it's very uncertain. Uh, but one thing I would say fundamentally, uh, this is just going to increase and accelerate central banking uh, and government fiscal activity even further. It's even more positive, in my opinion, for precious metals. Uh, so now let's move on to uh, the precious metals and see what happened yesterday. I mean, early in the week, gold went up to almost uh, 1700 and then most of the week uh, after that it, it, it was trading between 1625 1660 thereabouts and yesterday finally uh, it broke that 1625 uh, and uh, it was a, a huge move lower and I'm gonna try to explain what I think happened there and I'm gonna compare what happened to gold in 08 and what's happening to gold now and also the uh, HUY index, the gold bugs, mining stock index. Uh, so I would say one of the major reasons why we see these moves in the price of gold uh, and other assets related to gold is that a big majority of, well, the, the great majority uh, of the people on Wall Street, speculators, traders, investors, they, uh, they invest in uh, paper gold, in uh, instruments that are tracking the price of gold, uh, like ETFs, like gold futures, mining stocks, it's not real gold. And a lot of them leverage, and they do it for speculation. They don't look at gold like many of us as a protection, as something that you should hold physical. I would bet they, they, they probably, uh, Almost 99% of them have never held uh, a gold bar or a gold coin. This is a, a one ounce uh, gold bar. This is a Engelhard a gold bar, one ounce. So that's how small a, a one ounce bar is. And then a one ounce silver coin. I bet many of them haven't held one of these. So uh, it's more, uh, they consider more of a financial asset. Uh, did anything happen to gold yesterday? Did some scientists find out that gold uh, actually does tarnish under certain conditions? No, nothing's happened to the properties of silver either. They're still the same. What I think happened yesterday uh, to precious metals, especially gold and silver, is the old saying of don't throw the baby out of the bathwater, uh, which basically means uh, that something good is eliminated when trying to get rid of something bad. So <laughs> I think that's partly what happened yesterday. Why do I say partly? Because there are other factors. Seeing that gold is very speculative, uh, while the instruments uh, of paper gold are very speculative, uh, the powers that be do use, use it to their advantage to kind of control the price. Uh, so they were probably involved as well, kind of trying to get the speculators to puke their positions, so to speak. And why? Well, because I think they know that uh, a huge barrage of uh, more fake money is coming through from the central banks, more fiscal 
uh, policy, expensive fiscal policy is coming from politicians, and that's going to make gold even more attractive. And a lot of these bullion banks, the, uh, the central banks, have short positions in paper gold. So they also need, it suits them because they'll be able to cover those short positions because they know that gold is worth having in the near future and long term. So I think that's what happened yesterday. Yeah, uh, they threw the, the baby out of the bathwater, that being gold and silver, because uh, they were probably getting margin calls on all kinds of uh, other inve investments or speculation, and they needed to get rid of some of their gold to cover that. There is that. Uh, and there is the manipulation part as well. So let's have a look at uh, gold and stocks in 2008 and 2020. A lot of people have been saying that uh, gold would probably go down during uh, the next crisis, just like it did in 08 or 07 and 07, 08. So we've got here the comparison. Uh, top left hand chart is the Dow from January 2007. And you can see that uh, the Dow topped sometime in October, end of September 2007. Then it started going down. It culminated with a drop and a low in March of 2009. So it was over a few years. Uh, and then you let have gold below. Gold actually was trading up all the way uh, up until March. It went from about 600 to 1,000. But then when things started speeding up in uh, March of 08, the stock market collapsed. Gold was having a tough time there. Couldn't make newer new highs and then eventually it bottomed uh, just below 700 and that was uh towards the end of october 2008 and from there you can see it just started picking up again it was uh, almost one way street up it uh recovered eventually made a new high uh and we know it went to a 1900 uh in 2011 so yes it did drop during the crisis there but if you uh, remember the uh, 07 08 crisis the uh, crisis started showing up in the beginning of 07 with some subprime lenders going under so gold actually did go up in this crisis it did have a correction lower when the crisis culminated with the lehman collapse and then it picked up so now uh as i said the crisis this year uh, is really uh, one for the books. <laughs> Look at that drop in the Dow here, the top right hand chart. It's quite amazing. The collapse is so quick. I've never seen it before and I've been in the markets since the late 80s. I've never seen it drop like this uh, over one week. Uh, so it wasn't like uh, 07 to 09, where we saw like a gradual uh, drop and then a culmination towards the end. This has been a culmination all at once. So as you can see here, gold has been going up pretty much with the Dow. Uh, it kept going up as well after the top in the Dow and when we saw the market correcting and and when we saw the Dow starting to go down and then later on this week, it kind of uh, uh, range traded between 1625 and 1660 or thereabouts. And then eventually yesterday, they threw the baby out of the bathwater. And uh, that's what it was. Same for silver, of course. So all that does for people like us uh, who... Uh, stack gold and silver is actually give us an opportunity to uh, to get out of this uh, fiat system even though I would venture to say that uh, the premiums out there are probably quite high so you probably won't really get the price you see here the spot price um, what about the gold bugs index because uh, I noticed uh, the mining stocks have dropped a lot. I don't have any mining stocks at the moment. And uh, the same thing happened uh, in 07 and 08. 
as you can see here by this chart, uh, the HUY topped in March of 2008. It had been uh, rising quite nicely since January 07 from around 300, it got up to 500. And then we saw also uh, the baby being thrown out of the bathwater there. And we bought them uh, at 150 uh, towards the end of 08. But then it just resumed its move higher, eventually it went to 600 uh, in 2011. So that's the uh, mining stocks, HUI. Just want to have a look at the uh, the monthly chart of gold. As you can see here, I've spoken about this uh, 1585 level, 1586 level. It's the 61% retracement of the high in 2011 and the low in 2015. And uh, look where we closed yesterday, right on that 61.8 uh, retracement. Uh, for the month, gold was slightly lower actually because in January it, it, it closed at 1588. So that's the uh, monthly chart of gold. Yes, it was a historic week for the stock markets. Uh, and as I said, I think the reason why it's been such an abrupt and sharp drop in the stock markets is because the powers that be try to keep the cycle from evolving naturally. And all of a sudden it, it's burst through the barriers and, and that's what we get. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of uh, more uncertainty, volatility going forward. Uh, when is the bottom going to be for the stock market and how much deeper uh, is this just a, a correction? You listen to the mainstream people, uh, they don't even see uh, uh, the system being in a crisis. I think we are in a crisis and uh, this week showed it. Those people who think we're going to go back to range trading and the markets are going to stay uh, calm, uh, I think they need to... Uh, maybe look at the bigger picture and what's been happening since 08, 09. And the bond market is showing that, that to us as well. Of course, we made new lows in the 10 year yield this week at 1.12%. So uh, central banking policy is gonna come back with a vengeance in my opinion. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Uh, think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. Please share this video far and wide. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, BitChute, Steemit, and DTube. I wish you all a great weekend. Take care. Bye.